You ever hear that phrase, life is like sliding doors? Yeah, well, me too. And this is exactly how I accidentally started an automation agency in 2023. Before I explain how it happened, I need to take you back to 2015 when I was at university. I failed for the first few semesters, was told I was never going to be anything. I studied technology and a minor in entrepreneurship. Thinking about that now, studying entrepreneurship is kind of like learning to ride a horse by reading a book. It doesn't really work until you do it. But I took two huge learnings from that degree. The first one is if this, then that logic. And the second one, I can do anything if I can just YouTube it. Despite odds and my teacher's disbelief, I managed to make it through uni, get a degree and start working in tech. This gave me first-hand experience in a soul-crushing corporate job. And spending a lot of time working from home, it gave me a lot of time to think about what I actually wanted to do. I saw a lot of people close to me, friends working in the fitness industry. I'd been training for a couple of years now and they were making six, even seven figures. And I was like, I wanna get a piece of that pie. So I followed the path to get certified. I spent my time, I did my course and I moved into state to then follow a dream of building a fitness business up in Queensland. So I started off in person and worked as an online coach as well. And during the time I was meant to be walking the floor for clients and trying to meet people and actually get people signed up, I was too busy focusing on the tech side of things. I loved finding out how I could automate my onboarding, automate my fulfillment, pretty much anything that was repeatable. I was like, is there a way for me to automate this? Because it was fun. I was a natural dot to dot connector. And I felt like for me, that's what I enjoyed the most. However, it led to a bit of a demise for me because I spent too much time focusing on that and not enough time actually focusing on getting clients. And as it turns out, I didn't really like coaching people. So I just went fully online and tried to get clients that way. Where people would look at being an in-person trainer as a failure and, and whatever and me not getting fully booked and I finally stepped out of my comfort zone and did something different. And for me, that was massive. So it was a huge win for me going in person then going online, which then led me to eventually asking my friend who was doing seven figures plus in his fitness business, if I could come coach with him. So he said yes, thankfully, as I was struggling and I wasn't making too much money and I was like, I need to make some money. <laughs> and I was exposed to his business. And I observed for a while, I saw how a seven figure business ran and I realized that they were doing a lot of things manually. I said to him, I was like, hey, I'm pretty good at this, this tech stuff. Can I automate your business and see where I can potentially streamline some processes because I feel like I can save you a lot of time, a lot of money. And he was like, absolutely you can. From there, it felt like the biggest sliding door had opened. I was doing something I loved, which was the tech and the automation and seeing how I could streamline businesses to be more efficient. And I felt like I'd really like come into my element and I'd never really understood people when they were like, I love what I do for work. I thought they were full of shit. Like I didn't think it was real. I thought it was some fantasy that people kind of just like portrayed, like pretending to be happy, but it was true. I loved doing what I do. I still love doing what I do. So I was like trying to automate everything. And we were going through different parts of the business, seeing what I could do. And we had some really cool success. From the work I'd done with him, he mentored other trainers and fitness business owners. One day he was literally like to one of his mentoring clients, they'd spoken about automation and implementing it into their business because they were in a similar position as we were before. And he calls my name out from the other room. I walk in and he's like, Matt has an automation company. And I was like, Sure, I do. So on the whim, it just started like that. And that's how knock-on automation came into fruition. I was very fresh in business and I hadn't really seen some kind of great success up until that point. It was all of a sudden charging three, four, five, even $6,000 for a package to consult in these businesses. So I'd fallen into this business kind of on accident, kind of being pushed by my good friend and now I had to make it work. So my company now really does two things. We help fitness businesses automate and systemize their business so that they can scale, take on more clients and free up time but I also consult to six seven and even eight figure businesses now on how they can improve their operational excellence I look at their business see where the bottlenecks are and see if you can automate anything by streamlining that process and what I am to do with this channel and what I'm going to explain next is how you can think with an automation mindset and see if you can take what you do automate it and make heaps of money so what the hell is an automation agency and how do you start one automation is taking a task and getting a program or a bot to repeat it for you with little to no human input and the reason that's beneficial is because one it saves you a lot of time and two, it saves you a lot of money and resources. And in the past where you potentially may have had to hire someone to do something, you could now automate those tasks and save an entire person. Say for example, in the past where a lead came into your website, waiting for you then to reach out to them manually, maybe it's the next day or the day after if you've been really busy. Uh, instead of that, it will then confirm the lead has been sent in. It will then send a reminder for them to either book a call or whatever you want them to do next and follow up with them until they do or until you can get on the phone and call them manually. So it creates touch points 
points to remind that person of what their objective was at that point in time. And that way it allows you to spend more time either like closing or fulfilling or on your service and what you got into business to really do in the first place. So how do you start one? And it's actually kind of easy. You just find a person with a problem and solve it with automation. The reasons I fell into this so quickly is because I was already a part of the fitness industry. I understood it as a whole and I knew a lot about coaching businesses and what their biggest problems are and where their bottlenecks are. I was already solving those problems and I was thinking about them as well because they were problems I was experiencing. And I was able to look at those implement a solution and know that the next coaching business or the next fitness business would probably have the same issues as well. So I garnered a lot of experience in the fitness industry beforehand and then just applied my automation mindset to it and I was able to fix a lot of things. So my biggest piece of advice is start where you are. Like for example, if you're in the corporate world and you love automation and you think that this is something that you could potentially do, find ways that you can automate your job to build up a little portfolio that you can then take to someone else and say, hey, I did this would you like me to do it for you? And they're most likely gonna say yes because no one's gonna turn down free work and or taking work off their plate. And then you kind of run from there. The second thing to do is create a compelling offer. Now, this is where I struggled the most in the beginning is because when people would ask me, what do you do for work? I would say, I automate things. Now that doesn't really get you clients. Speaking from personal experience, you need to have a way that you can craft a message that speaks directly to them and shows that you understand their biggest issue and how you're gonna actually fix that issue. The way I would go about doing this, identifying the audience, so find who you're gonna be working for. Say for example, if you're a florist and you work with florists and you've been doing that for a while, I would look at that business and see what the biggest problem is currently. Say for example, that you get orders come in but you're constantly following up a client to make sure that you're getting everything right for them. So how many roses they want, how many um, different colors they want in the bouquet, all of that kind of thing. If there's a lot of following up back and forth, it extends over a couple of days and that can be automated. So for example, if you knew that was the case, when the lead would come in, you could enroll that person into a text message sequence using a platform like Go High Level, where it would then ask a certain amount of questions based on what the florist knows they need. So when, when they get access to the lead or when they complete a sequence, it could send them a message with every single thing that they need. Now, yes, you could ask that in like an inquiry form. However, long inquiry forms tend to put people off from actually going through it unless they're really bought in. So your offer could look something like this. I will implement my pick of the bunch flower ordering system. Never Never worry about confirming any customer's orders again in 10 days or less or you don't pay. So that's a pretty good order, uh, offer. And if people in, in the florist industry, florists could confirm that, that would be great. But it was just something that I, I came up with. I learned how to create offers from this book, $10 million offers by Alex Hormozzi. If you haven't read it, do it or do it now, do it yesterday. Read it and listen to it at the same time. It'll be greatly beneficial. Now you've got a bit of experience. So how do you get clients? So, well, to be honest, for me, I was in the fitness industry. So I knew a lot of business owners who were struggling with the similar kind of issue, right? So I networked my way into their business and helped them now from, from the inside out. There are so many ways you can get clients and it, but it seems to be the biggest issue that people have. Networking is one of them and it's probably the easiest if you're already in that industry, but you could cold call your local area, getting their numbers through Google. You could create like a voicemail drop campaign, which if you want me to do a video on, I can show you how to do that. Basically, you just record a voicemail and it sends it to that person and then they call you back. Takes away the biggest hesitation around cold calling is people saying, you got me at a bad time. You can create content on social media like I'm doing right now. <laughs> you can use text message automations. You can do cold email. You can do LinkedIn automations. There are so many, the, the list goes on. I hope that's a good insight to how I started my agency. If you have any questions, just like comment them below. Again, I'm new to YouTube, so it's, it's, it's fresh. And if there's anything you want me to go over and explain, just comment that below as well. Thanks for watching.